Hey, this is Marissa. I want to share with you today something so special I've been putting together for a long time. It is the steps that will take you to phenomenal success. Now, I've been working my entire life with people who are wildly successful, movie stars, writers, directors, billionaires, CEOs. They all have what I call the habits of success, and they actually all have the same habits. So I'm going to take through each habit, show you how to apply it to you. Then I'm going to ask you to go through a process of visualizing, because people who visualize do better than people who don't. And please stay until the end, because at the end I'm going to ask you some very specific questions to find your gift, your unique skills, the thing that you can perfect and monetize, because we're here to find our gift, perfect our gift, monetize our gift. You're going to learn so much invaluable stuff, and it's going to help you more than you can even imagine. Follow this program, and it will turn right around and follow you for your entire life, and you'll be so glad. The first thing successful people do is this. They take some time to say, I am worthy of success. I am deserving of success. I'm worth my product going to market. Everyone's going to love it. I am worth earning a lot of money for my skills. So let's do that together right now. And as you do it, you might notice, you might say, mm, I feel stupid saying that. Some people say, I feel really angry saying that because I don't believe it. And others say, I just feel so silly. So I feel really emotional, it brings me to tears. Whatever it's bringing you to, that's a sign keep going, keep going, keep going until it feels normal. Repeat after me, strong, confident voice. You're gonna embody this, own it, say it, state it, affirm it. Don't mumble it, say it with passion. I am worthy of success. Another one, repeat it with me. I am deserving of phenomenal success. Repeat these two lines. I deserve success. I am worth success. Here's another two to repeat. I am deserving of success. I am worthy of success. Make your voice louder, more exciting, more convincing. And add some more words to it. I'm deserving of phenomenal success in my field of, and add what it is. I deserve to be an amazing writer an incredible IT expert, a phenomenal inventor, a powerful entrepreneur. Keep doing it, keep doing it. But this time, close your eyes and really say it with feeling. I deserve it, I'm worth it, I'm deserving of it, I'm worthy of it. With your eyes closed, I want you to imagine, what does it feel like? You've got, I haven't got a clue, Stay there and make yourself feel that feeling of being so successful. People love you, they love your product, they love your skill. They pay you incredibly well for the skill you have. You win awards. You wake up every day with your head held high and feel really proud of yourself. Just start to wire in, code in and fire in some feelings. And this is not going to end today, so although I'm taking you through this fairly quickly because we've got a lot to cover, when this session is over, you're welcome to pause the recording, go through it, and I want you to do this over and over again until it isn't what you do, it's who you are. So while you're busy noticing what does it feel like, here's another one, what does it look like? What do you look like? How do you walk through the world? What does your life look like when you have a great product, a great business, when you are successful, when you are winning awards, getting accolades, being praised? What does that look like? Because if you can see it, you can absolutely achieve it. And while you're feeling it and noticing what it looks like, add in another one. What does it sound like? What do people say to you? Hey, I love what you've done here. I would have paid more for this. Can I invest in you? Can I partner you? Could you come and speak at our event about what you've done? What does it look like, feel like, sound like? And we talk about the smell of success, the smell of money. What does it smell like and taste like? Use all your senses because all you're doing here is making something unfamiliar. Familiar. Here's the rule of the mind. The mind wants to return to what is familiar while moving away from what is unfamiliar. That's the fact. Here's another fact. You can make these statements of truth familiar. You can make these feelings familiar. You just have to practice. So while you're making these statements and practicing, here's something that successful people do. 
They take a long, hard look at what they want. And they become more clear, the more they look over and around and through what they want, the more they see it. So I could say, you know, in the 90s, I wanted to write a book. But when I took a long, hard look at what I wanted, it, I didn't want to write a book at all. I wanted to write a best-selling book that changed people's lives. I became more clear because anything you require or requires something, if you want to write a best-selling book, then you better learn to be a great speaker unless you can go on stage, go to speaking events, go to book signings and talk about your book, you won't get a publishing deal. If you want to create a business, you don't understand search engine optimization. If you don't understand marketing, not enough. So. The thing that you require so much, what does it require of you? What must you learn? Where must you learn it? Often it is learning marketing. You know, I've trained 17,000 therapists to be amazing. But they also have to learn marketing to be even more amazing. It's the world we live in now. So as you look at what you require and you get to see what it requires of you, now you have to go out and do that thing. You have to learn the marketing, learn to sell, learn to ask for help, learn to ask for investors. You have to do the work. But if you've done step one, I'm worth it, I deserve it, I'm deserving of it, then you can do step three. I knew someone who was a great artist and I said, look, it's okay to paint great pictures, but you have to take them to galleries and that's hard because artists by nature are quite fragile and sensitive. But when you keep saying, my picture deserves to be in the window of that gallery. My picture deserves to be in everyone's home. I deserve to be revered, recognized, respected as a phenomenal artist. That when you do that bit, you can do the next bit, which is take your paintings to galleries. The first gallery said, no, that's not for us. But they said, but over there is a gallery, they will love it. She took it in there. When she left, it was hanging in the window. So when you do these three things, tell yourself you are worth it. Wire in and find what that feels like, looks like, sounds like, understand what it requires of you. Go out and do the work. You're going to do one of the other things that super success will do. And here it is. They do not take no for an answer. They hear no. They hear no a lot, but in their head, they hear no in the current state or no today or not for us, but for someone else. You know, I watched Dragon's Den, what in America is called Shark Tank. And a guy came on with a little suitcase called Trunk. He was showing it to them and the strap broke. It was just a prototype. And they laughed at him and said, this is rubbish. It will never sell. The strap broke. It was just a mock-up. He was very angry, but he went away. And he didn't hear no. He heard no to Dragon's Den. He heard a delay, but not a denial. And if any of you have been to an airport anywhere in the Western world, you see Trunky everywhere. I bought it for my children, for my friends' children. Everybody loves it. Because people who succeed don't take no for an answer. They hear a delay, but not a denial. They hear come back later. Meryl Streep was told, Meryl, you'll never make it in this town because you're not beautiful. You know what she said? That's an opinion in the sea of opinions. I'm going to go away and find another opinion. And thank goodness she did. So there are many people who heard no, never. Are you kidding? Not on your life. And what they heard was, oh, it's a no to you. It's a yes to someone else. Like the Gary that said, no, this is not for us. Someone else will love it. One of my books got turned down over and over again. I still remember the thud. I said, my man, you should come through the letterbox and land on the hall floor. And they only send it back when they don't want it. And I could hear, oh, they don't want it, but they're the wrong publisher. I'm gonna send it to another one. Somebody will love this book. And I sent it back and sent it back. Someone did love it. And I've now published seven best-selling books on the way to do my eighth. Develop the bounce back factor. Do not take no for an answer. Don't even hear no here. No today. No for us, no at the moment, no in the current climate. No, not quite right. The next point that very successful people do is this. They take action every single day in the direction of their goals, where they do something every day. So when I decided to write a book, a best-selling book that helped people that changed their lives, I thought, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do something every day. 
So five and a half days a week, I'd write, 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 do a little research, most writing. But on my day off, I would do one thing in the direction of my goals. I would watch a YouTube video, go on to Amazon and look at what are the titles of best-selling books. I could say, I don't want to write today, it's my day off, but I can do spell check, grammar check, write the acknowledgements, write the thank you, work on the index. If you take one action every single day in the direction of your goals, it makes you feel like a massive winner. So you must do that. And here's another one that is so important. You must, must, must with a capital M, be prepared to do what you do not want to do to get to where you want to be. What does that say? Well, surely I shouldn't have to do what I hate. Well, on the way to your goals, you do. When you've made it, you can be selective, you can take time off, you don't have to do, don't do that stuff. But on your way to success, you must do what you do not want to do. You know, when I was a therapist, again, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be the most successful therapist in the UK. I wanted to be known for being really good. And I knew what I had to do, and it was pretty much cold call. And I said, would you like to write about me? And I did that every single day. I never liked it. No one likes cold calling. Well, I don't want to do it, so I'm doing it. Because there was a companion rule to doing what you do not like, and it's this, do it first. Make that difficult call first. Ask for help first. Chase up the money that's owed you first. If you wait all day to make that difficult call, you know, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. People who succeed do what they actively dislike to get to their goals, and people who fail will give up their dream before they do what they dislike. Decide which lane you're going in. You're going to do what I don't want to do. I'd rather give up my dreams. Let's all go in this lane. Because the wonderful thing is when you do what you dislike enough, you actually start to like it. We live in a world where many of us work from home, work on our own, work on our laptop. We used to have a boss that would go, well done. Today, you know what I saw you do? What I noticed today, by the way, you're going to be employee of the month, employee of the year, employee of the week, because I observed this, I saw that, I was impressed with that. But if you work for yourself, who does that? Well, you're looking at that person right now, you. Imagine you have a muscle, a praise muscle, and it grows with youth and it withers without. So we all need to hear great words to keep us going. And you have to sit at home or as you're coming home in the Uber, on the tube, on the bus, you have to start saying, today I was on fire. Today I was so talented or kind or patient or persistent. You have to praise yourself and tell others who don't brag. Just say, I happen to be the best at this. Like a great doctor, a great chef, a great pilot. I was flying from LA to London once, hit the worst turbulence. It was very scary. And the pilot came and said, please don't worry. I happen to be the best and most experienced British Airways pilot. I fly this route every week. And in 20 minutes, we'll be out of it. We took a little Disneyland detour here. We didn't go, oh my God, how arrogant. We went, oh, we've got the best pilot. He's the best, the most experienced. He said, don't worry. It's 20 minutes of turbulence and then we'll be just fine. We all breathed out. We like the best. It's reassuring. So you got to learn to say, I am the best or I'm one of the best. I'm one of the most skilled, the most qualified, the most experienced. Don't be scared. If you can't tell people how good you are, how will they ever know? And if you don't have a boss or a supervisor or a line manager saying you're so good, do that job yourself. Think of this muscle, this praise muscle, grow it or let it wither away. It's down to you. Here's another thing very successful. You've probably heard of it already. They delay gratification. What does that mean? Well, human beings are wired to work and get a reward. Work and get a reward. After all, years ago, we had to go and hunt our dinner before we came home and ate it. Nothing was delivered. We know the children, they do some work and have recess or what we call playtime. We know that parents say tidy your room and then you can have a cookie. Eat your dinner and then you can go out to play. Finish your lunch and then you can have dessert. So our brains actually love this thing of work, reward, work, reward. And if you just take the reward, you have this weird thing of, I didn't earn that. 
And if you didn't earn it, you have an overwhelming desire to get rid of it, which is why, by the way, 70% of lottery winners are bankrupt in three years. Isn't that amazing? How do you put that into practice? Well, the simplest thing is to go wake up in the morning and I'm going to have a yummy breakfast avocado on toast and delicious coffee. But first, while that's cooking, I'm going to make a difficult call. I'm going to, and then that's going to be my reward. At lunch, I'm going to go for a walk in the park, but first I'm going to do something. You cannot take the reward until you've done the work. And that can be as simple as if I make that difficult call, send that email, write that piece. I'm going to call my friend for 20 minutes. I'm going to watch my favorite show. I'm going to have a long bar. The things that give you pleasure, start to make them reward and start to delay gratification. I won't do that until I've done that. The test you may have heard of are called the Maslow test, where children are given a pretzel. So if you don't eat that, for 10 minutes you'll get another one. So they leave kids in a room with a pretzel or a cookie or a muffin or a piece of candy, no matter what it was. One group would look at that piece of candy and didn't eat it. The second group really wanted it and they would turn their chair around, bite their lip, play with it. Now they didn't eat it, the third group just shoved it in their mouth. In group one and two, 20 years later, had more success, not just academically or financially, but in their relationships, in their health, because they learned to delay gratification. So I'm going to take you through this in no order. It doesn't matter about the order, but I want you to make a note of which one you're going to do first. Do what you dislike, do it first. Take action every single day in the direction of your goals on your way to success. Develop the bounce back factor, become like a big rubber ball. Do not take no for an answer, see a delay, but not a denial. Learn to praise yourself, build up your praise muscle. It's your job. No one else is to tell you you're good. Knowing you're good is an inside job. Do not give that to someone else. You cannot outsource it. It's your job. I'm worth it, I deserve it, I'm worthy, I'm deserving. What does that look like, feel like, sound like, smell like, taste like? If you don't know, start to make it familiar. The mind likes what is familiar. It's your job to make good stuff familiar, to make those habits I showed you familiar, to make the opposite of them unfamiliar. So wire it in, fire it in, code it in, take a long, hard look at what you want, look over it, look around it, look through it, and then decide what are you gonna to do to make that real? Because you have to do the work. The best plan in the world will not work if you don't. And here's one more piece of advice that will really help you. What did you love doing between the age of five and 15? Take a minute, close your eyes. What did you love doing at the age of five and 15? Because what you loved and what made your heart sing, what sparked joy, then is a key to your unique skill set and your areas of excellence. You know, I loved, I was always writing stories about unhappy people, unhappy families. My mother kept them all. I read them and I thought, oh yeah, I really was a therapist in the making. I wrote all these stories about unhappy families with an absent parent. That was clearly where I was going. So go back and have a look. What did you love to do? Because here's the thing, it's very hard to succeed at something you dislike. But when you do what you love and love what you do, you can monetize it. So find out what you love. And I'm gonna end with some questions I'd like you to ask yourself. If I could grant you a wish today, if I could say abracadabra, make a wish, it can only succeed. If you had to make a career wish now it could only succeed, what would you wish for? If you could have the job of your dreams and it would be successful, you would succeed, what would you wish for? And by the way, you can pause this and you can write these questions down and come back. There's no rush to answer these. You might want to give yourself some time. Here's another question. What things spark joy? What do you do that makes you really happy that you could put into a career? Here's another one. If you won the lottery tomorrow, never had to work again for the rest of your life, the first thing you do is, well, everyone says, I would travel the world. Second thing is I'd buy a home, buy home people I love. But what's the third thing? You know, after traveling the world and buying lots of stuff, what would you do? Now you never have to work. How would you want to spend your time? You've got the traveling out of your system. Got a beautiful home now and a nice car in the drive, but how do you want to spend your time? It's very important to really think about this. So when you put these answers in the book, you're going to come back long after this recording is over and keep updating the answers. And here's another one. If you only had five years to live, you weren't going to be in pain, 
you weren't going to wither away, but you only had five years on the planet. And then it was all going to be over for you. You had some disease that would catch up on you in five years. What would you want your legacy to be? How would you want to be remembered? What would you want to leave? You have to say, oh, well, I'd travel the world. I spent time with my kids. I know that. But we've got five years here. So you've done the traveling, you're spending time with people you love, but what do you want to leave behind? Most of us are not scared of dying. No, we're scared of dying without having made an impact. Dying without leaving something behind. So people say, I'm going to write that book. I'm going to write that play. I'm going to create that thing. I'm going to leave a legacy. And here's just one more question. What have you always wanted to do but held back entirely because of fear? What have you wanted to do but fear has held you back? If you could have been fearless, what would you have done? So look at those questions. What sparks joy? What did I love doing between five and 15? What would I do if I never had to work again, if I only had five years to live? If you could grant me a wish, it could come true. And what have I held back from just through fear of failing? Because in that, you will find more answers. And then all of this is a big circle. Find out what you're meant to do. Start saying, I'm worth it, I deserve it, I'm worthy of it, deserving. Take a look at what it requires of you why in and fire and what it feels like to do it, go ahead and do it. And then add in those special characteristics. Do it first, take action every day in the direction of your goals, bounce back from no, tell yourself you're amazing, build up your praise muscle, delay gratification, follow your goals. These habits belong to success, or naturally or not. It doesn't matter if it's natural, you know, an expression I love, it doesn't matter how long it takes to climb the mountain when you get to the top. The view is the same for everyone. If you adopt, acquire, own, learn, or naturally have these habits, it doesn't matter if you have them and use them. Only when you go to success, success will go to you. What you are moving towards will move towards you because once your mind moves to a new dimension, it doesn't go back again. And one final thing, your potential expands as you move towards it. And once you move forward, you don't go back. You couldn't even begin to know what your potential is because as you get to it, it expands again and again. Your potential is unlimited. So are you. Please add these things into your life. Share them with other people. Share them with your children. Share them with people who will benefit from them. Write to me and let me know how you're getting on. And what I love is JFD. Just freaking do it. Don't think about it. JFD. My publisher to me, Marissa, it's called Bum on Seat. Sit down, write that book. And now sit down and write the second one and the third one. I said, I've only got one book in me. He said, don't be silly. You've done one, you can do 10. I was wrong. He was right. Just do it and I'll stop being what you do and become who you are. I wish you massive success. I'm here to help you keep in touch, grow towards massive success. And I'll see you next time. Sending you lots of love. Check out my next video here.